I wasn't going to film today because I have a lot of work I need to get done. I had a really good work day yesterday. It was Saturday. Today is Sunday, April 2nd, I believe. And I have a lot to do today. So I wasn't going to film because I just didn't want to add anything more to my day. But I am going to film a little bit. For what it looks like and what it's worth, I got my corn patch finished. This is a hilled up row here. I have a hilled up row on either side of the garden. Right there and right there. And then some things are hard to convey, but I have little trenches dug right there and there and so forth. There's five of those. Those trenches are where I'm going to put my corn seeds. However, when I went in the house just a moment ago and I started graphing all this out, because you know me, I've got to have a schematic and a graph. <laughs> when I started graphing it out, I am going to take about six feet across the whole front of these five rows, and I'm going to buy that land back and put some bush beans on it. I'm not going to let the corn have it all. I am going to put a few bush beans there. I just need some more space to grow some bulk bush beans. I have pole beans planted. I have a few bush beans in my sugar kettle, but I don't have row feet. I'm kind of used to rows and gardens. And even though I'm trying to kind of make a lot of planting spots around this house and not so much have big gardens, I do tend to still want to plant some rows of things. So that's what I'm doing today. I'm going to buy this six foot back for the beans. Then it'll be corn and corn, two different varieties. I'll tell you about that in a minute. And then there'll be a regular row all the way down one side and all the way down the other side. And that's going to be this garden. But there's more to the story than that. There seems to be a lot of traffic today, even though it's Sunday, so please forgive that. I just have to push forward with going ahead and filming this so I can get busy planting some seeds. I'm also sitting in this strategic spot so that you can see my potato plants in the background. I'm getting so proud of them. They're getting bigger and bigger, and uh, there may be one potato per plant under that soil, you know, I, who knows, but still the plants are doing good. That's all I can ask, that the plants are doing good. The reason I said there's kind of more to the story is because this was just going to be a corn patch. I needed a place to plant corn because corn you can't just tuck here and there in your flower beds around your house. Corn you have to plant in groupings. You need at least three or four rows of it and make a square with it or a rectangle or something like that because the way corn pollinates is all the little tasseling things dry and they fall on each other and pollinate those silks. And so you can't just tuck it here, there, and yonder. So I knew I needed a spot for my corn. And that's all this garden was going to be. But I'm like y'all. I sit here every day and I watch news and I watch things. You know that I'm very kind of in touch with all that. And, and I'm passionate about it. I hold back a lot <laughs> on my videos. But I do convey my feelings every now and then about certain things. And times are tough for all of us doesn't matter if you're rich or poor when you walk in the grocery store and you're paying so much more for groceries it hits everybody in their pocketbook it's just mo some people feel it more than other people because of your economic earnings and status others may not feel it but the effects of it are there for everybody and gas prices come and go and go up and down I, I can't even think about them too much anymore it's just it is what it is and you have to just pay it but when it comes to food, that's really the part that hits the hardest because I grocery shop and I do have to buy things for our family. And I'm always talking about growing food for our family. And um, I, I, that is my passion because it's one of the only things I can control. I've yet to be invited to join OPEC. They haven't invited me to do that yet. I don't know why. <laughs> and I just don't know why, but I've not been invited to be in the World Economic Forum. Uh, nobody with the United Nations has called me lately to see if I want to help with anything or get my advice. <laughs> so, there's only so much in this world I can control. Planting gardens, planting vegetable production, that's something I do have some control over. While I have my health, 
while I have the means to buy seeds, while we have this property and we're on it and we're living here by the grace of God, I do have some control over that. So that's what I try to hold on to. That's what I try to hold on to. But I don't know about you, but what still propels me sometimes, even in this task, which I have some control over, what propels me though is that background of unease and fear sometimes. Because I can walk around my yard and here lately, I know I had those few bad days of the freeze, but here lately, I'm just like, my heart is full because I'm walking around my yard and so much is coming up and so much is growing and my pumpkin plants got blooms on them the, uh, yesterday when I walked out here, I noticed. And my pole beans are just looking so good and everything. And so while my heart can be so full, all of a sudden I can hear something on the news about the banking or I can just see a report that Jamie Dimon invited all kind of people to his house last weekend to have a meeting I don't have confidence that when they're having these meetings, they're all asking each other, how can we protect the American people? How can we protect people's money? I don't think those discussions are what are going on. I think their discussions are based on how can they protect themselves and their banking institutions and save themselves. And so it leaves you, even though your heart is full and you think you're doing all this work, you think you're making progress, when you hear about all these meetings, Fed meetings, on and on and on, they all keep having all these private meetings. Anytime you hear about Jackson Hole and all this stuff, there, all these people who we don't even elect are having meetings to talk about things that will affect our money, our retirement accounts, our banking, our ability to transact. And it affects me. It affects me even though I'm doing the best I can, I'm planting. I'm hauling dirt. <laughs> I'm moving things around my property to try to, to um, rocks and just everything I need to just make a flower bed do better, look better, make my water drain better. I've, I've said all that to y'all already. And those things are on my mind all the time. And I'm trying and, and I can look out and I can see that I'm making progress. And I am so proud sometimes and then you get your feet cut out from under you when you wake up the next day and even worse news happens and worse news. So I'm going back to, I can't control everything. I'm going back to what can I control? What can I control? I can't control if I'm gonna be able to use my debit card tomorrow because my bank's gone under. I can't control that. Uh, what I can control is trying to spend my resources in the best way I can to spend it on seeds, to spend it on things for our house that um, I just bought a generator, uh, things like that. I, I can take that money out of that banking system and spend it, but I don't wanna waste it. I wanna spend it on responsible things that I feel like will help us in times of need. And living down here in Louisiana, we always kinda of have to think that way too because of hurricanes. So because of hurricanes and all, I do need a generator for this house. And so I don't mind spending it. But even outside of the financial and the money, you have to just keep thinking, okay, what else can I do? What else can I do? So this corn patch that I have right here today, it was gonna be for corn, but now it's evolving into more than that. How can I make it an ultimate corn patch? How can I make it produce more? I stepped it off. I had my tape measure out here a while ago on, on some parts and then I stepped off. And this is about almost 20 feet by 36, 37 feet. How can I make that produce the most that it can for me? I don't have time to research everything to death. What do I have today? What seeds do I have in there? What do I have at my disposal? That's what's been going through my mind today. This morning, my sister and I were talking and we were talking about uh, Donald Trump being indicted and things like that. And those things cause me a lot of anxiety because I'm seeing a persecution of people in this country who don't uh, go along to get along. And that bothers me a whole lot 
I may end up addressing some of that at the end, not personally with him, but just some thoughts that I have about that. But, so I woke up today thinking, okay, you already worked so hard yesterday. You got so much done yesterday. You did good. But how can you double that workload today? How can you double it? And when you go out and you fool with that corn patch and you get it ready for planting, how can you make it work even harder for you? And so using the resources that I had in my mind and using uh, some information that I had read a while back, I'm just gonna try. That's why I decided to add a few more things to this corn patch. I've got it drawn out. It's not pretty. <laughs> it's drawn out, you know, in just pen and paper, but I'm gonna show it to you, kind of how I'm gonna add a little more production to this corn patch. And then when you think about when the corn is done, when the bush beans are done, when things are done, you can also roll behind that with other crops. So this, what I have on this sheet of paper is not the end all do all. I can come behind this at some point and plant even more things. And I can make this almost 20 foot by 36 foot piece of ground work for me. I'll have to put some work in on the front end. I'll have to do some maintenance. I'll have to do the hilling up of the corn but then make it work harder for our family. And by having my land work for me, it does help to bring down some of that anxiety that you feel, at least in my case. Being able to look out my front windows and see all that's growing helps ease that anxiety so much. Um, I hope, I hope that you're feeling that too. I hope that you're able, I know some of you are more north than me, you're not doing all that I'm doing yet, but you will be able to. You will be shortly. But just be planning. Just be planning. Because the more that you can do, the more seeds you can put in the ground, the more production you can get, it takes back some of that anxiety. What I'm trying to say is, when you do grow all this, and you do go ahead and can things, or freeze things, or however you want to process it, you're just giving yourself so much security and you're just buying yourself uh, some time and some space to look at the money you have or the resources you have and say, okay, I'm okay with food right now, pretty much with things. Where else can I use this? And I'm able to buy the generator or something I need. And it gives me a little bit of control, a little bit of self-determination to where I'm not panicking when I hear all this new stuff. I can just, I can just spend some time praying to be honest with you about it. To go back to President Trump, it so bothers me. Um, I was listening to Peter Schiff yesterday on YouTube while I was working and he, he ran for something at some point and he had some type of, he said, you always get investigated about your money when you run for campaigns and he got cited for something and they told him he had to pay a $10,000 fine. So he said he paid it, and he said he really didn't even understand what they were talking about, but you don't go crosswise with the Elections Commission, so he paid it. He is very confused as to why President Trump is being treated differently than other people in campaigns. I think we can all agree that most people sitting in elected office these days could be investigated for campaign finance laws and could uh, be fined or whatever. Why is he all of a sudden being treated separately and investigated by the DA of New York City and being drug into court and grand juries and everything for campaign finance laws? And you have to wonder about that because it does seem very, very targeted and it's very, very disappointing, but it pretty much just, it's icing on the cake for me because I've completely lost faith in our justice system in America. When a justice system can be co-opted by a political group, we don't have justice anymore. We don't have justice. Um, if you remember a few years ago, Dinesh D'Souza also uh, gave some money to a friend and it was over the amount that you're able to give. This should have been a fine. This should have been the money you got returned or whatever they, however they do it. No, D Dinesh D'Souza got sent to jail for it. Many people across the country accidentally do things like this all the time, but he got sent to jail for it. And then that wasn't enough. They sent him to re-education camp 
to learn how he should not be doing things like this and to learn how to <laughs> think. He literally got sent to re-education camp. You can look that up. He is, a, of course, a conservative. He, of course, uh, has done a lot of documentary work on the corruption in our government and everything. And he was treated differently under the law. Are we all gonna have to worry that we're gonna be treated differently under the law? I think they've already shown us that we are gonna have to worry about that. I think the years of people with conservative accounts on Twitter and YouTube and Facebook and everything getting different treatment than other accounts has shown us that we are gonna be treated different under the law. So when I woke up this morning, I really was thinking about our president and how tomorrow or this week, whatever day, I think it's tomorrow, um, they're going to try to publicly humiliate him and have him show up to be arraigned and um, however they're going to handle that. And they will do it in, in, a, in a way that causes him much consternation. <laughs> and um, I, be I do believe they're trying to rile everyone up so that they can also show what horrible people he has following him. And nobody's really playing into that right now, which probably is causing them a lot of concern. But... I'm not worried about it anymore. Um, this might sound strange, but I did listen to someone this morning. If you're ever so inclined, um, I would recommend following Greg Hunter on Greg Hunter's USAWatchdog.com. He has wonderful guests, and um, I learn a lot on there. I learn a lot. He has fabulous guests, let me say, and um, that's where I do feel like a lot of good information comes from. And it's usually from people who have a love for God in the background and a love for this country. And I, I would rather listen to people like that than people um, that are just normally mainstream talking heads on the media. But his guest this morning uh, really spelled it out to me that rather than be in fear of what all is coming, it's actually going to be our release. It's funny to say that because it's it's weird, but it's we have to get to these points to be free. It may be messy. It is going to cause so many people to be so scared, and I dread that. But we don't realize right now how enslaved we are. We don't realize it. We are sitting here scared to death that our money system is fixing to crash and scared to death that the dollars in our wallets are going to be useless and we're going to all have to be on the CBDCs. We're, we're, we're just scared to death of that. Well, no, we don't want CBDCs, but those dollars in our pocket and that whole system of, that we have right now with the Fed, with our treasury, it is all corrupted and it is all enslaving us. So it has to go. It has to go. I'm simplifying this. I'm not an economist, but I do understand what he's saying. It has to go. Things have to change so that we can be free. We're not free right now. I'm happy to say I'm debt free with my home and everything else, but we're not free. We're not free. Every decision I make about money and all, I'm making based on taxes, based on whether I'm gonna get in trouble with the IRS, uh, just decisions, you know, I have, my little gardening business it's it's little it's little but yet if you do something wrong if they decide to audit me um you just always are sitting in fear we are enslaved and we don't realize it uh we have money in richard's 401k we don't use it because a lot of people don't realize how you get taxed on social security and richard gets social security and disability a lot of people think Social Security is not taxed. That's not true. If you make so much extra money over and above your Social Security, they can tax your Social Security at 50% of it. If you make some more money, they can tax 85% of your Social Security. So, and the way they calculate it is a crime. The way they calculate it is a crime. So you have to think about things before you do anything. Do people realize that the law says you can make $32,000 more than your social security before you get taxed. 
But what they don't realize, what a lot of people don't realize is they count half of whatever you make of Social Security towards that 32. So if you make 32,000 in Social Security, they take 16,000 and count it towards the 32 you can make above it. Makes no sense. It doesn't have to to our government, but that's what they do. So really, you can only make 16,000 more than your Social Security before you start getting taxed. And you say, well, I wanna pull 2,000 a month out of my 401k to help out with all my bills. You can't do it. You can, but if you do it, you're gonna get taxed on your Social Security. <laughs> your Social Security is gonna start getting taxed 50%. And you have, to, you have to figure out, well, what can I take out? And then when you divide that by 12 months, you're really not taking a whole lot of money out of your account. And you may want to live better than that. You may want to grow your money and uh, do things or, or buy things or buy an RV and go traveling and all. And then you find out that the money you've worked so much for all these years that is sitting in the bank, that it's hard to take out that money because you're triggering all these taxes. We are already triggered. Richard and I are already triggered because he does get long-term disability right now, which is a benefit and we're glad to have it. His company paid the premiums all those years and we're glad to have it. But what he makes off of it already triggers us to where half his social security is taxed. If we were to take more money out of our 401k and all, we would be in the realm where we're triggering 85% of the social security to be taxed. So we can't do it. It's, I'm giving you figures and numbers like that because I want you to understand that like everything we do in our life, we're doing, trying to figure out how to just live. We're working and working and working and we're making money. And then we're having to give so much of it right back to the government in taxes and 10% penalties because we took our own money out that we work so hard for, but we took it out uh, before we were 59 and a half, or we took it out because our kid didn't go to college, so we wanna get that money back out of the account. And it's like, oh, no, 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 no. You know, you're gonna pay penalties on this because you didn't do it like we told you to do it. Everything in our life, if you really stop and think about it, we have to think about all those things. A lot of people are having elections right now. They wanted sales taxes in our area to be approved for the schools. <laughs> But they always come at you and tell you those sales taxes are only gonna be for a couple of years until they build this school or that school or whatever, and they never take them off the books. They never take them off the books. And then a few years later, they're asking you for another penny, another penny, another penny. Where I live now in this little rural community, we pay 10.45% in sales tax on everything we buy and everything we do. That's a lot of money. Everything you go to buy, you're paying 10% more in sales tax. That adds up over the year. So back to control, back to control. All you can really control is the things that you have the skills to do. Right now, I have the space and the skills to garden. That's all I can really control. So I looked at this corn patch after hearing things and, and knowing things that are gonna transpire this week and knowing what probably is in store for our country with hyperinflation with food prices and all. And I'm like, dear Lord, help me kind of figure out how to sneak a few more things <laughs> in this ground that could help me. And I'm gonna actually do that all over my property. I'm walking all over my property here shortly. And I'm gonna put another pumpkin seed here. I'm gonna put another uh, cantaloupe there or another winter squash. And I'm gonna try to have as much growing as I can around here. And I'll sell some of it. I'll eat some of it, my family will and I'm gonna put up some of it. Let me show you my little schematic and I'll just kind of show you what I'm doing in my corn patch today. And I hope this hasn't been too deep of a conversation for this afternoon, but um, it's where my mind's at right now. That's another thing that happens when you're out working by yourself in the yard. You do a lot of thinking, but it's also where I can find a lot of peace after doing that thinking. Let me show you my little drawing. Well, this is the corn patch as I discussed it with you a while ago. The bush beans here, the bodacious corn there. I'm putting the Mosby prolific corn there. Along this side, I'm just gonna put a bunch of black eyed peas. I'm gonna kind of maybe even over plant them a little bit because I'm, I'm almost out of black eyed peas. I love those even more than purple holes. Over here, half of this row on the left, I'm gonna put silver queen okra. 
but I'm going to intersperse the seeds with some garden burpless cucumbers. In the back, right back here, I'm going to put some heavy hitter okra, which I've heard is supposed to be very productive but I'm gonna intersperse it with some garden burpless cucumbers. So I'll end up having cucumbers down this whole row. That'll be okay, interspersed with my okra. In this bodacious corn and maybe some in the Mosby prolific, I'm gonna also plant some edamame. In between each uh, planting of corn, I'm gonna intersperse it with some edamame. Some shirofumi uh, variety because I only have a few seeds of those left. And then some Midori giant edamame. I'm kind of looking, uh, these striped bush beans, they are very quick. They're only a 45 to 50 day bush bean. Um, I don't know if they give a second harvest, but I definitely know that it'll be a pretty quick one, the first one. It'll be out before the end of May. So I can turn around after that and plant other things there for sure. This bodacious corn is a 75 day corn it's considered early so it won't be there forever either and the edamame will come out about the same time the mosby prolific is 100 to 110 day corn so it's going to be there a while i'm not really going to sit here and covet that spot yet because i may end up just putting a cover crop over this whole uh, planting at the end um, but in the meantime before i do a cover crop i should still have time to plant something uh, for, in this spot for sure, maybe that spot. These black-eyed peas, they'll be about 70 days, but I may have uh, time towards the fall to put something in there as a fall crop. So I'm gonna get busy and plant this now. I'm excited to get it going, and I'm excited to know that I have a little bit of control over my life by getting out here expending a little of my energy, expending a little of my time, but in the end, I get to see new life come up. I get to know that I'm providing food for my family. I get to know that I'm providing kind of a backstop for other friends and other family that might end up needing some help. I'd love to be that backstop for people. I'd love to help. And it just gives me peace. I'm out here with my beautiful potato plants. I'm out here with the weather, the wind, and it's so peaceful. This is Lainey from Hilltop Home Place. Get your gardens growing. If it's still cold where you live, at least get the planting going and get ready to plant as soon as you can. It's what we can do. It's what we've got to do. Thank you so much for joining me. Y'all have a great day. Bye-bye.